Um, this has been kind of a fun event to look at. We're starting at the region, and then now we're kind of narrowing down into some sub-markets. And what sparked my mind thinking when Judge Mosley was here, he was talking about the old Route 66 and how that was replaced by uh, the interstate highway system. How many of different markets uh, kind of expired? You know, these sub-markets, if you will. Um, when you had your hotels and your cafes and your industry right on Route 66, uh, and then the market kind of moves away from you, the, trans the means of transportation moves away from you, those ecosystems dry up. Um, well, preventing that in Cedar Park, Texas is my day job. Uh, I work for the Office of Economic Development, and I know some of you have worked with EDOs around the state. The Laredo Economic Development Corporation is one of the crown jewels of what Texas does to market itself. Uh, and I learned working with Laredo and markets all over the state by um, my start of my economic development career for the state of Texas. So Governor Rick Perry made economic development a real focal point of his administration. He had a lot of good successes. Uh, but a lot of those actually, a lot of those policies and resources sprung out of some losses that we had. Uh, competing with Chicago for the Boeing headquarters, the original run at Toyota's manufacturing plant. Um, some of those were not successes. And so Governor Perry and his stakeholders came together and said, how do we organize and make sure that the state supports municipalities when they go out and protect their ecosystem so they're not uh, tumbling in the wind when the means of transportation go away from them. Uh, and the model, I think, is not necessarily unique to Texas, but I'm biased, I'll say Texas does it the best. It's a decentralized approach. So the cities really are at the tip of the spear, the municipalities, the regional partnerships. They're the tip of the spear when you're going out there to develop the economies of the future. Uh, and so I'm glad that's my job today. Uh, David was nice enough to carve out a little bit of time for me uh, because I am, you know, the economic development office that represents his, uh, his home. I know Sebastian mentioned earlier, he's in Cedar Park as well. Uh, so I'd love for you guys to come and get to know our ecosystem a little bit better because I think it is going to benefit a lot from the, uh, the corridor that we're here talking about today. Um, but again, through strategic decisions that we have made as a partnership. Let me get into that a little bit. One of the uh, bright, shining examples of what Cedar Park has to offer is a company that hopefully you've heard about more and more this year called Firefly Aerospace. Firefly is an end-to-end -end space company that can do anything and everything when it comes to space, meaning not just deliver payloads off-world, although they do that very well, they also successfully landed and operated on the moon as the first commercial uh, entity, non-government entity to ever do so. They did that this year with their Blue Ghost mission. Um, well, the reason that I've mentioned them here in this forum is because they came to the city of Cedar Park as a startup company. It was just a handful of, an execu of executives, some were leaving um, SpaceX, I believe, the founder, uh, and some of his resources were also leaving Blue Origin, and they wanted to go out on their own. Uh, and the city was able to partner with them in that kind of nascent form, uh, with, through economic incentives, uh, and then continued to partner with them as they grew. They have two full locations, including their headquarters in Cedar Park. And as they were modernizing the mission control that actually successfully landed on the moon, uh, we were able to partner with them in the form of economic incentives. And I give that example today because people say, well, sure, you can be successful if you have uh, Firefly Aerospace in your backyard. Or sure, Round Rock can be successful if they have Dell in their backyard. Now Taylor is building up around the wonderful partnership between Samsung and Tesla. Um, but those things don't happen overnight, and typically communities aren't born by recruiting a large blue chip company, if you will, Fortune 100 company. Uh, communities are formed by working with these partnerships early on. Uh, and that's why AI is so uh, interesting to our community. We have a really strong organizational tool around the innovation economy. In fact, if you go to our website, cedarparkedc.com, you'll see we say where innovation happens. We think the blueprint that was successful uh, with Firefly continues to serve us well today. Uh, I was talking to Sebastian earlier and some others about bringing on board a premier accelerator program two years ago called Plug and Play Tech Center. I know uh, uh, David knows it well, he's been out to some of our expos. Uh, this is a VC-backed um, accelerator program that has been tremendously successful globally. They have tens of thousands of startups in their platform because one, they don't take equity from the startups, so there's no barrier to entry for these young companies to work with them. And two, they have 70 locations around the world. So right here in Cedar Park is the first Texas location. We have access to startups around curated verticals uh, that have a global reach. 
And so when we say, you know, we our strengths and our uh, priorities, our strategic goals are around advanced manufacturing, space technology, life sciences, etc. They can curate first look uh, opportunities with startups uh, in those different verticals, and that's been a really big uh, resource for us. And it also helps the existing businesses, you know, the corporate partners, if you will, in Central Texas. So Raytheon, BAE have come to the table and been on the advisory board. Even HEB has been on the advisory board of our programming in Cedar Park because they can go and tackle uh, next generation problems like supply chain, integrating AI, AI platforms. I was meeting with a um, plug and play cohort member yesterday. Uh, it's called Pulse AI, it's a new company. Uh, and what they do is integrate AI into a supply chain platform that allows you, know, you as a, a, a corporate operations or logistics uh, uh, hub to have a meeting with your key folks, but while that meeting takes place, your directives, your decisions can simultaneously be routed out to your facilities all over the world and have your changes, your directions uh, implemented in real time. Uh, those types of kind of lightning fast progress around supply chain, I think is you know, kind of one of the tiny little offshoots of what the work we're doing here in the corridor will uh, we'll bring to the table. And that's why I think a community our size, 84,000 people and growing, uh, is well poised to help those young companies. Before I wrap up, I do want to announce that we have kind of some exciting products, again, geared towards young companies. So if any of you are working with young companies or maybe you're an entrepreneur here in the audience. <coughs> uh, as of October 1st, we've just launched a new incentive program called the Innovation Grant. Uh, and it's a $400,000 fund at the city level to help young companies with uh, initial early stage investments. Of, in fact, they're not even investments, it's a grant of $25,000, $50,000, or $100,000, depending on the size of your company and the length of your commitment to have your headquarters in Cedar Park. Uh, and we think that this will grow over time to eventually be a million dollar uh, annual fund uh, that we can use to help get the toehold of the next uh, Firefly Aerospace, the next highly on energy or on young engineering. Uh, so if you are an entrepreneur yourself, if you're an investor yourself, I invite you to come to Cedar Park to be part of one of our expos celebrating our cohorts of companies. Uh, and if you have a project that you're interested in talking to me about, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you.